I don't think we can start today's episode like that. Let's make it a little bit more fancy. Let's put some LED light on. There we got. Hello beautiful people, how is it going on? My name is Darek and I'm making the candles. And in today's episode, I want to show you how to perform a wick replacement during the candle testing. So if you want to see how to do that, stay tuned. Okay, I don't know how good idea is that to hold the camera in my hand, but today I'm performing some testing on the candles and I want to show you something. So as you can see we have two candles and one of them is doing all right, but the other one is not doing all right. As you can see this one is funneling, so it will indicate to me that the wick is not strong enough for this one. Obviously I don't have like full uh, melt pool yet because I was burning them yesterday uh, and that's the result I got uh, that I'm not really 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 happy with this one uh, the other one is doing quite all right so on this one we're gonna perform a weak replacement so we're gonna put this one aside somewhere there so it can end its life we'll see how it's burning However, we're gonna focus on this one. As you can see, or not, yeah, hopefully now we can see a little bit better. It's not really burning very well. As you can see, it's feeling really, really bad. So we're gonna extinguish it. Uh, then we're gonna perform the weak replacement. And we will take it from there. So let's give this candle a few minutes uh, because wax really needed to come back to its solid state. And in the meantime, I will tell you why I really like the weak replacement uh, method for testing my candles. So basically, the thing is that testing candles takes long, but it's also very, very important. So if I have a candle that is done, it's cured and it's not burning as I would like it to burn uh, then instead of making a new candle wait two weeks for the wax to cure I can just take off the wick put new wick lit it and see how it goes and if I'm gonna find the wick that I really like how it's burning then I'm gonna create one more candle since scratch with selected wick I'm gonna let it uh, cure with the wick and then I'm gonna perform the test once again. However, I see the wick replacement as the method to save a lot of time and also a lot of money because you already have the candle, you don't need to pour another one. So I will talk to you once the wax gonna solidify on this one. So what we're gonna need to perform the wick replacement? Obviously we're gonna need our new wick. We're gonna need scissors and we're gonna need some sort of pliers. And as simple as that, we grab the old wick and ripping it off. Then we take our new wick, put it in, in that hole, and trimming it. Actually, I'm gonna try to give you some better view. and trimming the wick. Now we just simply lit it, the big hole around it. We'll just 
get it uh, filled with the walls. Okay, it's gonna take some time now for the candle to actually create some sort of melt pool. So I'm gonna come back to you once there is some progress in the candle here. So as you can see guys, this candle is not really doing well. It is still lit but barely and it's probably gonna die within a few minutes. And in this situation, I don't blame the wick, I blame the dye because I use different sort of dye in this candle than in any other that I'm producing. Uh, so I'm not gonna be using it anymore. I think the dye is clogging up the, uh, the wick, but that's just like the little theory. Uh, However, takeaway from this video is how to actually replace the wick in the candle. So for example in this candle we replace the wick and we know that it's not wick that is to blame because the previous wick was doing exactly the same. So so thanks for watching and like always see you in the next video.